So maybe you're new to Blender and you start to realize the bigger world of 3D and texture assets that you can get online, a lot of them for free, and you start wondering, how do I use this stuff in Blender? So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to import and use 3D models that you've downloaded online from different formats. I'm gonna show you how to set up a material from textures that you've downloaded from online, and also how to import and use a shader or node group that you've got from online. So let's get started. I am going to go to Sketchfab and I found this really cool pile pile of debris. Don't we just love piles of rocks and debris? What is with that? I think it's the realism uh, brought into the 3D world that mesmerizes us. So this is beautiful. It's a, actually a photo scan. So I'm going to download this, but first it is important to look at the license information. CC attribution means I can use this. Uh, if we click here, it says we can use it commercially. We can redistribute it, um, but we have to give attribution, which means uh, citing who made this, which is Matowska. My Taosek photo, that guy, uh, link to his account um, when you use this, when you post any artwork that uses this. Uh, so let's go ahead and download it. And uh, Sketchfab is an amazing website with uh, 3D scans, 3D models, all kinds of assets. And it often gives you multiple formats, which is great. We're going to use the first one, which is uh, happens to be the original FBX, which is probably the most common uh, 3D uh, format out there. So I'm just going to click download. It's going to download into a zip file. I'm going to open my Blender folder that has all my stuff in here. And because this is downloaded from Sketchfab, I'm very organized and I'm going to put it in my Sketchfab folder. Uh, what is it called? Waste Construction. So I'm going to make a brand new folder, Control Shift N, name it Waste Construction. I'm just going to say Pile, so, so that kind of reminds me. Oh yeah, it's a pile. Put that folder over here, open up the zip file, put it over here. Where's my folder? There we go. So I got this and this. I'm going to move from one to the other. Uh, I don't like how Sketchfab stuff downloads because often if you go to source, uh, there will be a zip file which contains the textures, even though the textures were also in this texture folder. It's a little bit, it's literally redundant and I don't know why. So I'm going to go to here and I'm just going to grab all this and drag it over. You could extract it, but I just, I don't know, I like to do it manually when it's one thing like this. So the first file is the, it's, you can see a 3D object and it is a .fbx. And these are all the image maps to apply the texture, which I'll show you how to link up in just a minute. Um, it is important to remember what file type you just downloaded because in Blender, there isn't just a general universal import. You have to use the correct plugin to import the right file type. So FBX has uh, an importer and OBJ and DAE are other popular formats. They have their own importer to use. Uh, so I, I hope that'll be fixed in the future, but it's not yet. So go back to Blender, hit file and import. And here's where we need to find the right one. Here's the one for FBX. This is for OBJ and this one's for DAE. So FBX is what we got. I'm going to go to my Sketchfab folder. Here it is. It's the most recent one. WasteLumber.FBX. Double click. Now, depending on how large and complex the thing is that you're importing, it may take a while. It may even freeze Blender if your computer can't handle it. Now, a classic to a 3D scan is it comes in crooked. I don't know why. There's always like an offset, almost always, to the uh, to everything. It's, it's crooked. Like if I go to my flat view, you can see it's not flat. So uh, it looks great. The texture is actually imported correctly, which is awesome. Sometimes they don't. Um, so let's fix the you know crookedness of this. I'm going to select my debris pile, hit tab to go into edit mode. Because this is going to take a while. There we go. This is a lot of polygons. Once you're in edit mode, you can move the original polygons around without affecting the origin point. So I'm going to press G to move this down, and it is lagging, even though I have a pretty good computer. Uh, it's not liking me right now, but that's okay. There we go. And I click to confirm that move. And I'm going to press numpad 3 to go to the other view, and I'm actually going to hit R to rotate this. So R is for rotate. M is for move. Whoa, a little much, too much. There we go. I, I use G and R to basically put it on this green line, which is the ground line. Uh, numpad one, to, yeah, that looks good. And seven for an above view. It's roughly centered. I can press G and then Y to shift along the Y axis. I just want this to be flat on the ground. So when I drop this into a scene I've already made, which will presumably have a flat ground, everything's just gonna line up and I'm not gonna be hiding stuff underneath the ground plane. So that's good. Tab out of edit mode and we're done, you know, kind of fixing the asset. Um, these scales are all set to number one, which is good. Let's check out the textures to see what happened. So I'm gonna split my screen by clicking up in the top corner and dragging down. Go to shader editor. And we just have, uh, oh, we need to go to our material tab. There is actually three, three textures here. There's U2, U1 version two, and U1 version one. 
I don't know why, but that's just how it is. These are probably assigned to different sections of the mesh, and they each have just a basic um, image data for the color, and they have a normals map, which kind of gives it like the bump and the direction of the lighting to simulate further geometry without it being too complex. Um, so yeah, it all mapped correctly. You usually don't get this lucky when you import a 3D scan. Uh, sometimes you have to manually set this up and hopefully get it all right. So that's good. I'm actually going to save this now as a um, blend file. But before I do that, I'm going to right click on my waste lumber mesh over here and check mark as asset. And now I'm going to save it as a blend file. I'm going to put it back in that original folder. And down here, recent folder, it shows it waste construction pile. Same it, save it as waste construction pile keep everything the same so that you know what's what save great now why did i mark this as an asset i did that so that i can see this in my asset browser which has access to my sketchfab folder if i go here this, these are different libraries i've set up sketchfab and um, if i go to unassigned there it is waste lumber right there i can just drag and drop this into a 3d scene and that's how I like to build scenes when I already have stuff pre-made. In order to have your asset browser work, you do have to set up the file paths in your preferences and make sure that, for example, my Sketchfab folder is registered here and I save that blend file that I just made into the Sketchfab folder. Even if it's in a subdirectory, it'll still work. It'll look through this Sketchfab folder and find all of your um, blend files that have assets marked inside them. Um, for more information on that, check out my other two videos linked down below that cover the um, asset browser in much more detail. Let's move on. Um, let's say you're going to import something that's not an FBX. You do need to use the correct version, whether it's an OBJ file or a DAE. Um, so just keep that in mind. Let's move on to importing a texture. Now, Ambient CG is the best PBR website that I found online. It is completely free and the license is awesome. It's CC0, which uh, Creative Commons Zero, which means you can use it in your own stuff for free. Um, you can redistribute it in files or in products. You can even use it to make money. Yes, free stuff to make money. This is one of the few places you can genuinely find that without any strings attached. So uh, I'm gonna find a texture that I like and I'm gonna show you how to import it and set up all of these specific uh, parts. I like this one. I'm going to go to it. I'm gonna be super extra and download the 4K version because if I'm using a ground plane like this, I usually want it to be high resolution. So download a 4K JPEG, save it in my downloads folder. And I'm gonna do the similar thing as what I did before where I'm gonna keep things nice and organized. I'm gonna name stuff appropriately. And I'm gonna move my files over manually to where they need to be. So let me go uh, up to my master blender folder, textures inside here. I have, let me make this a little bit bigger. Windows right and then Windows left. There we go, just a little screen split here. So I've got a, uh, all my folders down here that are the different types of PBR maps. This one is gonna be ground, so there. And then I'm going to make a new file. And what do I need to name it? Asphalt 021. So control shift in, P-H-A-L-T. 021 enter enter and there we are let's open up our uh, zip file from our downloads folder there it is grab everything drag it on over all right there it is now some of these files we don't need these this usda i think that is for like texture painter or some other program that we don't use maybe for unreal i don't know honestly comment down below let me know what the heck that's for but we don't need it so they're, they look really small, like reference files or something. So I'm going to delete them, go back to Blender. Let's open up a brand new clean file. There we go. I'm going to make a sphere. Size it up really big and make it shaded smooth by pressing W and clicking on Shade Smooth. All right, let's make a material. Go to Material tab, press New, name it Asphalt 021. Keep everything consistent. This way, if you need to download the 8K version or the 2K version, you know exactly what it's called and you should be able to remember that you got it from Ambient CG because they're the best. So it's easy to track things down and, uh, and also credit things if you want to do that. Okay, so uh, Shader Editor, I just did a screen split. Um, let's uh, click on the principal BSDF, which has all these parameters that lend to photorealism if they're used appropriately, and even better if you have image textures plugged in, which is what we're gonna do. That's what PBR is all about. So click on it and press Control Shift T. You should have this pop up. And if you don't, you need to go to your preferences and your add-ons. I need to turn on an add-on called Node Wrangler. There it is, check it and it'll work just fine. Go back to Shader Editor. 
So click on BSDF, Control Shift T, and let's find that folder we just made. So I know it's in my textures folder, it's in my ground folder, it's right there, and here are all the different stuff. So I'm just gonna press A to select all, and import, and then click on Printable Texture Setup, which is really cool because look at this, it automatically hooks up almost everything. Not all of the maps that we just had, but most of it. I'm not gonna use displacement, so I'm actually gonna delete these two guys, just to speed things up a little bit. Um, we do have an ambient occlusion, so I'm gonna shift D this node, drag it up here, connect that vector data, shift A, type in mix RGB, drag it on top of the color noodle. This is the color data coming from base color into base color. And each of these nodes represents one of those image files we just downloaded. So this one needs to go from a copy of base color to the ambient occlusion map. Sort them by name makes it easier. There it is, ambient occlusion, open image, plug it into the bottom slot, turn mix mode to multiply, and turn up the factor all the way up. All this is doing is layering this guy on top of the color data, and it's giving some further cavity and shadow effects, as you can see. Just a nice, nice gritty realism touch there. Let's see what other maps we had that it may not have used. Um, let's make sure it used the normal GL JPEG file, not the DX version. Yeah, use the GL good. Blender works better with OpenGL normal maps as opposed to the DirectX. It needs to, that needs, it's complicated. I don't want to get into it. So this is decent. This is good. We've got all the maps that we want plugged in and you may have just made your first material asset. Let's right click on it and choose mark as asset. Great. And now I'm going to go to file, save as, and I'm going to put this blend file, which contains this material asset into a folder that's going to be found by the asset browser. Again, more on that in my asset browser videos. Um, but uh, I'm going to go to texture, ground. I'm just going to make a ground PBR blend file, which will contain all these other ones. Once I get around to it, this blend file will contain these guys as well. It just doesn't yet. Right now it only has asphalt. So save as, and there we go. Now if I go to my uh, asset browser up here, I am going to look in my textures folder, go to unassigned because I haven't sorted it yet. There's my asphalt. I could make another, you know, like a cube over here, make a cube. And now I can literally drag and drop asphalt 021 onto it. And awesome. There we go. Now, once you start populating these blend files with, you know, 3D scans or models or kit bashes or material assets like these, you do need to sort them into uh, catalogs. These are catalogs inside of the textures library. You can make one, uh, which I'm going to do right now. And I'm going to double click and name it ground. There we go. Go to unassigned and drag asphalt 021 into ground and voila. You need to save this blend file still. So control S. And that's good. One last thing in this video, I'm going to show you how to use node groups that you can get online. You can find material shaders and node groups all over the web. The best places to look, in my opinion, are Gumroad because a lot of them are free. They're really well made and they're really educational. If you want to learn nodes and Blender, just go through Gumroad and look, look for free stuff first. So, you know, buy stuff that you know you need, you're actually going to use. Um, but there's a ton of great free resources on there. And here's how to import a node group that I've downloaded. With your target blend file open, I want to apply this thing to this cube. I'm going to go to file and append, not import, although it is essentially the same. I'm going to append something from one blend file into another. So append really only works with blend files. Now I'm going to go to my shaders folder, which is full of all kinds of cool handy dandy stuff that I found online. All of these are free. This one's called UCP wood V1.1.0. Um, now when you double click on that blend file, look, we're actually looking inside the blend file right now. There's folders of data inside a blend file. Did you know that? Well, now you do. Instead of going to material, I'm going to go to node tree and I'm going to click on node group. Now this one by mistake is not actually named appropriately. It should be named UCP wood, but there it is. So click on it and click append. Nothing happened. No surprise. We need to give it a material and use the node group inside that material setup. So use shader editor, click on new, I'm going to name it UCP wood. Now shader is kind of a vague term in Blender because it can apply to a few different things, but uh, you can't use a node group without it being inside of a material. So this cube has a material named UCP wood. There's nothing going on inside of it, right? I mean, I could give it like a wood color, but that doesn't mean it's wood. So I need to import that UCP wood node group into here. Usually a node group, I kind of call a shader depending on what it does, but whatever. So shift A, go down to group, 
and there it is, node group, which is totally not named appropriately. And here it is, beautiful, lots of cool options. Um, it gives you all the outputs, so let's connect diffuse, which is color, to there. Awesome, already looks great, but we're not done. We got roughness, plug it in there. Oops, wrong one, there. We got the normal output, which needs to go down into normal, and the clear coat normal, which goes there. As you can tell, the creator of this node group really thought this through and put a lot of work into it, and it looks great. And the cool thing about node groups like this, which I would call a shader, um, it has so many great options. You can customize just about anything. There's no seams or tiling of a procedural material like this. Now, if you want to use this UCP wood material, which includes this node group, if you want to use this later as an asset, do the same thing we did before. Right click on your material, click mark as asset, save this blend file somewhere that's going to be registered in your preferences of file paths and um, libraries. Let's save this in my shaders folder. And I could name this something more generic so that I can include things later, um, such as photorealistic shaders. So in the future, I could be adding other you know, material node groups like this that are procedural but are realistic. Um, and that way I can find them easier. Now let's make sure this registers correctly in the asset browser. So go to preferences, file paths, and look at that, I don't have shaders listed. So I'm going to click on the plus button and I'm going to find a folder, which is in, uh, which is right there, shaders. And click add asset library, name it, shaders. And that's all we need to do. Oh, we do need to go save preferences. There we go. Now, if I switch this to my asset browser, there it is, UCP wood. And I'm going to go to a shaders library and let's make a photorealistic catalog and uh, drag UCP wood into there. Awesome. Now this rock material is showing up because it's in a blend file that's inside my shaders folder um, and it's marked as an asset so it's showing up. But uh, there you go, we have it organized. Hope this helped you guys out on how to download 3D files and use them, how to create materials from downloaded textures and use more complicated things like node groups and put them all in your asset browser for future use. If you have any questions, ask down below. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I hope you'll see me again soon.